Welcome to Online Tutorial 7 and uh, I'm hoping that you've made some good progress. That's what I'm hoping. If you haven't made good progress then keep an eye out for the email that will give you the times for the Zoom sessions which will be happening tomorrow um, and then again into next week. Um, there'll be plenty of Zoom sessions next week. All right. Um, now you can come to the Zoom session simply because you're just trying to verify things and check things. It doesn't mean you're struggling, all right? And you can email me directly and say, hey, Cole, I'm out of sync here. Things haven't worked out the way I wanted them to. How do we fix this? That's fine too. Um, but what I want to do with the Zoom sessions is to make sure that people have got the right focus in terms of the required task for the interim learning report what the rubric is wanting you to do, what you should have been able to achieve with the group, and what you're now doing in that execution phase. Okay? So I just wanted to recap. If anyone's struggling out there uh, in terms of your life situation having been thrown around a little bit and it's making life tough for you, just contact me. All right? More than happy to work through that with you and to try and help you where I can. Um, but if I don't know your circumstances, then it's really hard for me to help you. So don't be afraid to reach out and, and let me know where you're at with things, okay? But for the conversations that I've had with some of you, um, <clears throat> this is much probably where I'm at, I suppose, in terms of reiterating a few things that hopefully can help you along the way. Hopefully by now you've had your group meetings. And if you're still having them, the point of the group meetings is to have a conversation understand the diversity that exists in the group vis-a-vis -vis your resource profile. So you've got an area of interest, you've worked out an idea, we could create some new value by doing something. What have we got in the group in terms of social capital, human capital, financial capital, okay? So that's your starting point, all right? From that, you can move your way through as has gone through the guide. I'm not gonna go through that all again today because that's in the previous online tutorial. You can pick that up there as well. In terms of your interaction with the um, worked example, that's just getting you to ask the questions which you should be asking to help you keep on track, all right? Doing that's gonna help you to populate the canvas. And the canvas is only a record of the assumptions that you've started with. We're not going to mark you down or up on whether we like your assumptions or we don't. We just wanna know what were you thinking. That's all. So when we look at your idea and we're reading through section one, there might be something we think, wow, that's an interesting interpretation. We might go down and look at the canvas, all right? We're not marking the canvas. It's just there for our reference. It gives us a sense of the nature of the conclusions that you guys started to reach in your group meeting, okay? It can be dot points. You certainly don't have to explain how you're gonna do the idea in the canvas. And the bottom section, as I've said, inflows, outflows, you can ignore them largely, okay? So if there's something that doesn't get fully completed in the canvas, it's not the end of the world. It's not being marked. It's not being assessed, okay? It's just there for us to refer to if we're trying to understand the logic of some of the things that you're doing in section one, okay? Um, what I will reiterate from last week, though, is the use of hypothetical bridges, when you leave the group situation, so you've taken an image or you've got an image of the canvas that you've produced, you've got your own interpretation of the group's thinking in terms of how you could create this new value, and now you're sitting down to think about, okay, now I'm going to write section one. I've got a thousand words to play with. He doesn't want me to reference, and you're going to follow the guide that's on Blackboard. You're going to follow the section one guide and structure your work exactly like that. So you'll have those uh, headings, you know, your idea, your resource profile, all the way through to your CPS statement, okay? Make sure that when you run into a little bit of a corner that you find it difficult to get out of, you use a hypothetical bridge, all right? You might not be able to create the perfect example or the perfect narrative which allows you to say, hey guys, I really do understand what socio-political legitimacy is. Now, if you're in that space, you want to show us that you understand that concept and how it could relate, 
is the hypothetical bridge? Just say. However, if the government was to do this, or if people had this general view, then this could be used and X, Y, and Z. Okay? Highlight it. Put the if as a capital letters. Underline it. Bold it. Make it very clear to us that you're speculating. All right? We don't mind if you speculate. Because all we really want to do is say, well, there's 14 concepts at, in, in play here from the environmental interaction framework. To what extent can you use these 14 concepts in a way that demonstrates you understand not only what they are, how they relate to one another, okay? That's the task, all right? Whether your idea's got flaws in it, doesn't really matter, okay? It's not our worry. It's not our concern. Okay. So that's, I think, the main thing that you have to do there. Back yourself, be concise, keep using those terminologies as many times as you can. When you want to read back through your work and sort of say, okay, have I covered everything? You might have covered everything, but could you have integrated these things more, all right? Read your sentences and say, well, okay, I'm talking about social capital there. Does it actually relate to anything? Oh, well, I suppose it relates to selection, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay, by using this... By exploiting the social capital, we can reduce the amount of selection that would be working against us. Oh, all of a sudden, you've changed the sentence entirely, and you've demonstrated us that you understand the connection between how you can use something to your advantage, which will offset the potential of selection happening against you in a negative way. Okay? If we move on to uh, section two... Um, I've had some interesting conversations with people over the last few days, and I think the challenge is this notion of getting vertical. I think that's most probably the hard part that, uh, that many, and, and look, that makes you exactly the same as last year's class and the one before it and the one before it, okay? It's not an easy process. If you've done the reflection and it was easy, you didn't do it. It's as simple as that. To get the vertical growth as opposed to the horizontal use of the why to get that depth you've really got to take your time so you've got the primary question right as a learner you know what do you what does this mean for you as being entrepreneurial right so you've thought about that you've thought about who you are as a learner and what this may or may, maybe you're very cautious maybe you don't like taking risks so in terms of what you think entrepreneurship is what will that what could that mean for you right so once you've got to that point of working well i think it could mean whatever that is that's the starting point for the supporting questions that's what you've now come to realize or hold as a possibility as being this new thing that you've discovered about yourself for the first so now the issue is why why would that be the case why does that matter why do you think that way why do you feel that way and that would be your second sentence and then the next why would be saying okay so i've just given my exploration of the first sentence here and in my third sentence i'm now going to try and explore deeper the second sentence why because and away we go all right so as i've said to you put your best foot forward all right if i can see that you are attempting to get this depth then I'm going to mark you in a very supportive way. And the feedback you get from me will illustrate that, okay? Back yourself. That's all you need to do is just trust yourself, all right? If it was easy, you didn't do it, all right? If it was hard and it frustrated you, and at times you found yourself getting a little bit close to the bone, chances are you had a bit of vertical depth going on there, okay? And just remember... When you're using those questions, we start with thinking about the primary question, which is in the announcements area. We think about that and we try to work out when we thought about that, is there anything that's new to us? It's, and it, it doesn't have to be brand spanking new. It can be just new in the sense that while you sort of have always recognized it, it's not something that you regularly think about or have a consciousness about, okay? Then you can go to town. Why is that the case? Why does it matter? Why do you feel that way? And then you can ask yourself, well, having got down to this level, how does that relate to my values, right? 
if you've got the depth in the first supporting question, you'll be down somewhere around the essence of why you are who you are. And now you can explore that in terms of your values, right? More depth. Why do you have these values, right? Has this process of thinking about you as a learner relative to this notion of being entrepreneurial, however you think about that, has this challenged or confirmed the nature of your values, right? Then when you step away from all that, you can ask yourself, okay, I think what this was just telling me about myself is I tend to be something. I tend to be whatever you've started to get that depth moving towards. So then take whatever that is and look at question four and think to yourself, well, how does this relate to a past life experience? How can I reconstruct? How can I retrofit this awareness to something that's already happened a week ago, a year ago, five years ago? You say, well, yeah, I can think of a case, a situation where this happened in my life, and if I hadn't been as whatever you've recognized, I may have got a different outcome. Why is that? Why might it have been different? Well, I might have been more appreciative. I might have been more positive. I might have been, and why would that? By doing that, you're now becoming aware of how this sort of almost subconscious operation that you have in your life could have been different and could have produced different outcomes in your life then you can bring to bear on that a recognition of well, what does that actually mean in terms of me being appreciative of other people, right? How does opening myself up and asking other people what they think, how does that matter? How does, second last question, how does being aware and exposed to other information sources Maybe it's a different TV channel I watch. Maybe it's a different website. Maybe it's the food for thought videos. Maybe it's listening to other people's opinions. How do those other information sources help you? And then having done all of that, where did you get to? If you manage to keep that depth going all the way through, and there's a shadow of this notion of being entrepreneurial, which is always sort of cast on it, but it's not explicit, but it's always there and thereabouts. Now you get to the bottom, you've got an opportunity. What does this all mean for you as a learner? What does you becoming more mindful about the essence of who you are relative to this support, this uh, primary question, what does it mean for you as a learner? Are you being too cautious? Are you being too optimistic? Are you not committed enough? Are you too committed? What does it mean? So explore that. And then when you get halfway through, two or three whys, right in. Going forward, this is an opportunity for you to recognize that where there's an opportunity for you to improve as a learner, you could develop a strategy. I need to become more aware. I need to develop this. I need to. And then tell me those last two whys, why? Why would you need to do that? Why do you think that would help you to improve? And now we've surfaced all of this understanding in your own mind about what it's going to take for you to be not only a little bit more entrepreneurial, the challenges, opportunities in relation to that, but also in your everyday life. What is it that you can do to become a better learner? Okay? And that's it. All right? So I'm looking forward to seeing where you get to. Keep an eye out for the... The, the notices in relation to the Zoom sessions, which are really just, you can drop in, ask any questions you want. What I would say to you is don't feel like if you join the session, if I say there's a session from nine till 10, don't feel like you need to be there from nine till 10. Just drop in during that, that time. I, I will admit sometimes there are people who come along at nine and we talk till you know 9.45 and then they've gone and no one turns up and maybe at five to, 10, I've switched it off, uh, and then someone pops up and says, where are you? I thought you were going to be there. Well, I apologize when that does happen, but by and large, I'll try to be there, at least have it open for the whole time. You can just drop in for two minutes. Drop in, ask your question, and leave. If that's all you need is clarification around something, or you can pop in to listen to other people's queries. They're not sessions where I've got a preset message that I'm going to repeatedly deliver. I just, I'm available to respond to your situation, okay? 
So I'm looking forward to having those interactions with you. If you want to have a more private interaction with me because there's a challenge in your life at the moment and you want me to be aware of it and understand it and see if I can help you in some way, just email me or text me. That's not a problem. Uh, otherwise, can't wait to read what we get with your assignments and, uh, and obviously uh, have our second workshop where we'll be able to work through the next phase uh, of your use of the environmental interaction framework. And again, as, the, as I've said before, the link for that second workshop, you find it in the process map uh, on Blackboard. So where the site loads up, you see the process map and go along to workshop two. It's got the date, it's got the time, and it's got the link that you need to click to access that. It will be recorded, so don't panic if you can't be there for that exact time. Um, and then we can get you moving forward and we can create the plan for what you need to, to get through and complete the semester. So looking forward to seeing what you guys send to us. Uh, it's always very interesting to be able to read through your reflections. All the best.